So that is something we have to keep in mind and science has to have a solution for that because from our point of view now, we can say that um, ART causes epigenetic disorders and that is nothing we really like to hear. Um, so one slide again, just to make you aware of where this lecture is going to end, yeah, and now there comes the TCM part, yeah, because you can see there's the pathologies, yeah, epigenetics is the evil, yeah, but we can do something against it, yeah. So, for example, obesity, we heard obesity is one of the main factors causing um, epigenetic problems um, in male fertility, and TCM is really, really great, um, in beating obesity, okay? So for those of you that do some herbs, there's sweet warm wound, yeah? It's Ching Hao, yeah? Um, it's, into the, it's, it's in the category, clears heat from deficiency. And um, we know it because um, UU2 got the Nobel Prize in 2015 for that one and for the discovery of artemisine, which is one of the artemisinic acid, one of the compounds of the sweet wormwood. And um, that is found to inhibit the development and differentiation of adipocytes by suppressing master regulators um, in adipogenesis, okay? So that one can hinder the system in developing new um, fat cells, yeah? which would be good. Next one is turmeric in the metabolic aspect in adipocytes again. Um, it, uh, there are consistent reports indicating that uh, curcumin suppresses adipocyte differentiation by affecting classic um, regulators of adipogenesis. Okay. Next one is Huang Lian, Coptis uh, kinensis, um, which is in the category clears heat, dries dampness, um, and its um, component is berberine, and that is a potential drug in the treatment of type 2 diabetes and hyperlipidemia. Then we have the chili pepper, um, and that um, contains capsaicin, um, and that is a classical um, TRPV1 agonist, and that has been shown in humans and in rodents to increase satiety uh, and to reduce food intake, to increase the sym sympathetic nervous system activity, and not surprisingly, enhance lipid metabolism. So that is good to have. Um, with you in your diet or in your prescription, yeah. The next one is Lei Gong Tang, yeah. Uh, the uh, Tryptericum um, will 40, um, and that contains um, celastrol, and celastrol functions as a leptin sensitizer to reduce your food intake. And the uh, ginseng contains the ginsenoids, and there are numerous studies um, that have demonstrated that the ginsenoids are effective in preventing obesity, hyperlipidemia, and hyperglycemia. Okay, so that's just one aspect yeah, that I wanted to point out um, that herbs really do well in the treatment of um, obesity. Yeah, but of course, you can work with acupuncture. Um, personally, I treat um, obesity a lot with ear acupuncture. That's French ear acupuncture you see here. And there are just some examples of points and point combinations you could choose to help the people to get rid of um, their weight yeah, and to lose their phlegm. So you do Shen Men, frustration point, mouth point that they don't have uh, that they lose the feeling they just always have to have something in their mouth, hypothalamus, antidepressant, anti-aggression points, and so on. Yeah. Classical body acupuncture here as an example.
I, you know, I went to major journals and no one wanted this paper. And they said, we already know this. This is a, this is, this is sort of accepted fact. And then I put it in a Brazilian journal of urology because they thought maybe you should know this and guess, and the New York Times picks it up and it's my most cited paper ever, right? Because everyone apparently knew it, but they still, so I was like, <laughs> so silly, but you know, it's, it's just an amazing thing to me that this simple little fact, no one sort of, everyone thought it was true, but no one knew. And this is the kind of thing that matters. Okay, so the other thing is, you know, health matters because this is the stuff we published 10 years ago is that fertility is a biomarker of health and this field's exploding. So when you say, let's go to IVF and you don't evaluate the male, you're missing a lot, a lot because they're in fertile men, the comorbidity, their comorbidities are higher than fertile men. So there's a lot going on with these guys. You have a golden opportunity um, as generalists and basic medical care to find things, blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, lots of things. Um, you know, my biggest worry right now is pot because it's legal. And, you know, it's sort of like, does it legal means it's safe, right? No. So there's two blogs on this now and over 10 years showing that the relationship between pot use and testis cancer in young men and it is pretty alarming. So I don't, no one knows the mechanism, but the first, there are two epidemiologic studies independently validating this, but I'm kind of worried now. I had a guy from Brazil a couple of weeks ago, walks in, cancer survivor at 25, and, and he saw me for fertility after that in the US. And I asked him, are you a pot user? He said, no. I said, were you a pot user? And he said, oh yeah, heavily from age 15 to 24. And, and I, I said, oh, you know, I was like, wow. So, I mean, it's out there. And so remember THC sticks around in your cells. It's fat soluble for a month. So it's constantly, it's always there. You, you toke once a month and it's there for a month, right? So it's very interesting problem right now. And this is what's on my mind. So let's go through other kinds of data. Mm -hmm.